I would have never expected that to happen. There was this anime expo where Axis happened to have a stand, so far so normal, but what they announced I think surpassed everyone's expectations. We got four or three and a half games. Three and a half, <laughs> because the first one is only the Switch port of No. 9, which was already released in English on the Vita, followed by the new localized fan disc. Probably in a separate release, but maybe we get lucky and they'll bundle them together as in the Japanese release for the Switch. In No. 9, the three voiced MCs with their three respective love interests, so nine in total, <laughs> find themselves on an airship because all of them have kind of psychedelic powers and are warped back in time after a world war occurred, and now need to search for a way to return to their own time while discovering the secrets around their mission. The biggest complaint about this game is that the story is kind of all over the place, very confusing with some plot holes, but it's very dramatic, romantic and bittersweet, hereby open-ended. And all the three voiced, <laughs> have to say it again, <laughs> three heroines and allies tell their own story to shed a light on that weird mission. All characters are vastly different, and especially for us trash lovers, no one has a special ally to offer. Who ends this game of violence against women? Trigger warning. Yay. He's controversial. <laughs> the three voiced <laughs> heroines <laughs> are the innocent Kohane, the Tsundere Mikoto, and the shy Nanami, all going through their own character development together with the allies. Koharu can date Kakeru, Senri and Toya, who for example also voices Kanato in Diabolic Lovers, or Kei in Colleague's Malice, Sosuke in Club, or Hayato in Nilan Midari no Tenbin. He's a bright guy who seems easy to be with, except when he playfully bullies others and his power is to manipulate plants. Senri, who also voices Nayuta in Verbal Barricade, is rather withdrawn and prefers to stay in his room. He is very pessimistic as he is often bullied and socially awkward. His power is the manipulation of water. Masamune, who also voices Genjiro in Kimiyuki, is the protective older brother who is smart but not very skillful. His power is to see back in time. Nanami can date Akito, Ron and Heishi. Akito also voices Tyrell in Even If Tempest. He is a severe tsundere, that yells a lot and has a really bad mouth. He easily gets angry, but he's a good cook at least <laughs> and has the ability to manipulate water. Ron is voiced by Kudeba from Olympia Soiree. He is a bit suspicious at first glance and no one knows what his psychedelic power is. But when talking to him, he seems surprisingly friendly. Does he? Otomade also voiced Helvetica in Busterfellows. He is very energetic, lively, friendly and reliable. He can see through people but is bad at hiding secrets himself, as his power is telepathy. Mikoto can date. Azuma, Sakuya and Itsuki. Sakuya is one of the rare cases where the VA actually is a woman. He is the soft childhood friend who might or might not enter a triangle relationship with another character, but is entirely devoted to Mikoto. His power is to look in the future. Itsuki also voices Sanosuke in Hakuoki. He is the frivolous flirt, but with a tragic story behind his charming smile and his power is dream manipulation. Azuma also voices Hades, and with him you can't be sure, is he friend or foe? Will he be an enemies to lovers trope? Because this seemingly cold researcher actually attacks the ship, but of course he might still have a soft heart. This game also has an anime adaption, but as always, it's highly recommended to play the game first to get most out of both of them. DFD then thankfully closes some plot holes of the original game, but still isn't the most romantic for an FD. It features a prelude explaining how everyone got onto the ship, a section about the story of the main game from the LI's point of view, and of course the after stories, some sweeter, some more action-packed, but overall similar to the first game with a mixture of sci-fi plot and romance. The more surprising announcement for me was the localization of Shu and Novirsh. The hype was real in October 2021, <laughs> in the time of the Japanese release, and already then the Western audience was screaming for a localization, when the game wasn't even released yet. And Axis gave it to us, so thank you. Shu and Novirsh is set on an island where everyone dies at the age of 23. And if that wasn't tragic enough, the heroine also seems to be cursed by the god of death, eventually ending up killing the people around her. This dire fate makes her try to commit suicide, but she's stopped by a guy who introduces himself as the sentinel of death, and he suggests a pact. He will help her lift her curse, and she will help him with the strange death or rather murder incidents that have been haunting the town. 
So together with the Allies, she starts investigating these incidents. But what she'll find out is more shocking and more gruesome than she could have ever imagined. And the same might go for you too. You might be like me, like, yes, a story about death and despair. <laughs> Great! I love Kola X Malice, I love Pio Fjorda, I will like Shivinovich. No, 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 no. There's a big understatement going on. Vish is more sad and cruel than all the games we've played so far combined. The game main theme is despair, and it fully delivers on that. On top of the trigger warnings for suicide, mental abuse, torture, you can just take the setting. Everyone is doomed to die soon, or be revived in a clone and lose your ability to love. Or the root order, you first have to play the bad endings of every character until you are even allowed to play the good endings. And even then the good endings are sometimes just alternative sad endings. Because you might die soon, or were that much tormented in the root that you don't really have anything left to enjoy in your life. Believe me. That doesn't mean it's not a good game, it's just very cruel. But for more details, check out my review of it. And lastly, the announcement that didn't really surprise me, considering it was one of the most successful launches of an automated title on the Switch, and that is Radiant Tale, the complete opposite of Shuin no Vish. You set out on a mission to make flowers of joy bloom by making people laugh with your magical circus show. Because the prince of the country froze his heart 10 years ago, and these magical flowers have the power to melt his heart and bring back joy to the country. But there also are shadows born from sorrow threatening the peace. And each of the quirky circus members has their own reason to participate in this show. Some of them might not be as happy as they seem. In my review I described the game as a Disney Otome game. <laughs> because it's overall fluffy and cheerful and bright and colorful. <laughs> from the settings and characters and the lessons you learn in each chapter seem like straight out of a children's book. <laughs> but the character roots, though not very detailed, touch upon rather sensitive topics as well, like torture and mental abuse. But do it in a much, much, much lighter way than Shuinovich. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Despite the hardships the characters in Radiant Tale face, they are mostly happy and they all get their happy endings. But I still don't want it to be mistaken as a mere cheerful and lighthearted game, as it has its darker and tragic moments. But in a child-friendly way. Again, for a more detailed impression, watch my review of it or even read my spoiler summary on my website. So the era and high of Otome game localization seems to continue and strive. And especially with these announcements, Axis made so many wild Otome gamers dreams come true. And with such a variety of different types. For sci-fi plot and nostalgia, none. For dreadful despair, Bish. For the emotional Disney movie experience, Radiant Dale. The other games scheduled for 2023 are Winter's Wish and Duck Chan. But for more details about all the announced games, <laughs> check out my last announcement video or my video about all Otome games on Nintendo Switch in 2022. But if you want more people to know about all these announcements, then consider to like, subscribe or share <laughs> to spread the love for Otome games. What on the other hand is awaiting the Japanese side of Otome game announcements? And in these wild good Otome times, you could say that basically every game has a chance for localization. Most of the upcoming games I've already covered in this video, <laughs> but we do have small news about Sympathy Kiss scheduled for 2022, where you work as an app designer and get assigned to a team to save a news app from failing. And the first thing that stands out about this game is that the heroine doesn't have a face. Oh god, did, will this be one of these creepy faceless voltage heroines? You think it'd end the video right here, but no. <laughs> the CGs in the Beast Lock, the monthly like gaming magazine, show her sprite, but just not her face. So I think we can trust the, the designers to still make beautiful CGs like with her from behind or covered by the LI to not make her look faceless. In Sympathy Kiss you can first and foremost date your colleagues. Saotomo Mitsuki, who is the friendly and sweet head of the team, a talented developer who already launched successful apps. Minato Kohe, who also voices Pashalia in Radiant Tale, <laughs> or Benke in Bidushana. He is relatively new to the company, seems cool but capable, yet not extraordinarily motivated. Kumase Yoji also voices Anko in Shui no Vich. He is the head of the department and the one who put this group together. He's such a workaholic that his private life is unknown of. <laughs> his stern face and strong tone make him feared in the company. Yoshioki Rokuro also voices Hugo in Shunobish or Yoichi in Kimiyuki. He's the good looking and even rich flirt, but who is now more interested in work than romance. Tainaka Nori, who also voices Shelby in Cupid Parasite, you find one day collapsed and tend to him. A carefree yet eloquent fellow 
you can't quite figure out, but who always treats you nicely. And lastly, we have the LI I'm most excited for, and that's Usui Shuya, who is a calm and attentive bartender, always listening to you with a smile on his face. And I think he's the one who makes other fans feel most excited as well, either because they feel appalled dating an old guy, or they love dating an old guy, <laughs> and I'm on the other side. <laughs> the genre is supposed to be dramatic love, so not mere office romance. Though the staff suggest, as it's the same as a lover pretend, it might be more a down-to-earth story. Yet the more I see it, the more I'm interested in it, and then especially the voice actors seem very interesting. There are also two ports coming to the Switch this year. One is Shinigami to Shoujo, by the same team as Taisho Alice, where you look for the most beautiful word. Really, that, that's the plot. Because then every LI's route tells a different story. The game is quite plot-heavy and not so much romance-focused. If you are a fan of visual novels, though, Shinigami to Shoujo promises a uniquely deep story. The other part is Juza Engi 1 and 2. In Juza Engi, you are part of a shunned cat-like clan during the Han Dynasty and get entangled in a conflict between the kingdom and rebels who you have to fight in order to prove your innocence. You might guess this is a historical and plot-driven game, inspired by the records of the Three Kingdoms, with a sequel telling an alternative storyline. Another new announcement is the port of Uta no Prinsama All-Star After Sequel, with After Stories plus four additional senior routes for December 2022. I still vote for fewer Utopi games, though. I have no idea what is going on in this franchise. Also, there's Money Parasite by Takuyo. The MC has been fascinated with magic and always wanted to become a magician. But between her university and part-time job, there's not much time to enjoy some magic in her life. Until she gets invited to a magic show. But not as a spectator, but depending on her abilities, as a performer. Waiting for her are glorious men and a strange Kitsune Plashi who wants her to perform a heist on these exact men. Turns out she's been scammed <laughs> and has to rob these men while working as a dealer in the casino. The allies are Ko Haoden, who immediately wants the MC to leave. He doesn't want to get close to others and prefers to stick to himself. He came to crush the casino, which is part of the local mafia, in order to take it over. Jeremiah Jenkins is a famous singer who wanted to take a break in this casino from his busy idle life. Amino Saido is a prince from a country in the Far East, sent to exile by his family as he was about to become king. He now wanders the lands and is stranded at this casino. Kagami Fuma is the second son of a famous designer family, with a second identity as a famous live streamer. The MC is a fan of. Tanaka-san's hobby is script writing and giving in to delusions but he's never produced a real script. So why does this normal person also work as a dealer in this casino? So far, it sounds interesting, though after Sweet Clown, I can't trust any Takuyo plushies anymore. I can't really tell whether it's gonna be messed up or lighthearted because I find that this company does either one or the other, but I think I would expect it to be more on the lighthearted side. But we'll see. So far, the CGs look good and the language not too difficult. Other than that, we are still waiting on more information about Spade no Kuni no Alice, Wonderful Black World, that Fortune Princess and the Knights of Bad Luck game, and scheduled for 2023 are the Cupid Parasite fan disc, Sweet and Spicy Darling, and Buster Fallis Season 2. But get more information about most of the new Japanese announcements in this video. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>